let's look at some of the uh, epidemic models that were proposed long time back but those models are still relevant to the current current scenario current literature okay so so far a quick re recap so far we have discussed um, uh, a n normal uh, decision based model and also probabilistic uh, uh, probabilistic growth model and and we have seen the problems of decision based models and how probabilistic models you know uh, out uh, uh, overcome those problems and then we have seen cases where where um, i mean what's the probability that when a start when a certain epidemic starts spreading uh, what would be the nature of the of the curve right uh, based on which we can say that this will die out or this will not die out the epidemic will not die out and we have discussed we have uh, uh, you know we have come up with a terminology called reproductive number or reproduction number right uh, q times d okay uh, which essentially indicates that what's the expected number of neighbors which are going to be infected um, because of the parent uh, uh, of the parent infected um, uh, node right so now we will discuss again a different uh, epidemic model and these models were proposed long time back 1927 1928 during that time okay and the fundamental idea behind these two models behind the model that we discussed is basically that we will use some probabilities the first probability is called the birth rate which is basically the probability with which a neighbor a neighbor node attacks another node with the virus this is the birth rate of the virus okay this is also called the infection rate okay so with probability beta a node will infect another node okay and there is something called death rate death rate of the virus which is basically the probability with which an infected node heals infected node cures right gets cured so so this is the um, so this is the you know uh, the the broad epidemic model and we generally look at we generally look at this five states right susceptible exposed infected recovery and skeptics okay susceptible state so each node would go through one or multiple such states right so is the the susceptible state is basically a state of a node which is likely to be infected right e is the state of a node which basically indicates that the node has got exposed to that virus i is the infected state which basically indicates that the node has already got infected r is the state which indicates the recovery and skeptics is basically uh, those nodes which are susceptible uh, but who are no longer you know uh, following the infection or whatever ideas that we have so they are basically they are immune in some ways okay so you see here so this is the kind of a transition diagram from one state to another state from susceptible state you can move to exposed state from exposed you can move to infected state from infected you can move to recovery state from susceptible you can move to uh, skeptic state and from skeptic you can uh, from recovery also you can move to skeptic state when uh, you got see you have got some sort of hard immunity you will never get infected okay you see here with every state there is this exit symbol which basically indicates that at every state there is some chance that the user will die okay and uh, that user will be basically removed from the system okay now it is not the case that for all the models we will follow all these five states we will follow we can we can take a subset of these states and then define our own model for example the first simple model is called sir model susceptible infected and recovery right so uh say you are susceptible to certain uh, uh disease then you get infected 
with probability beta then with probability delta you get recovered right and if once you get recovered there is no chance that you will again become susceptible this is kind of a chicken pox right chicken pox um, uh, kind of uh, disease where i mean in, in which if, if you get infected by chicken chicken pox you will you will not be infected by it uh, you know in the, in the in the near future okay so or, or say plague okay now we will see the rate of change of susceptible population infected population and recover population okay so the rate of change of susceptible population so each infected so beta is the infection rate birth rate and this is the death rate recovery rate so each infected node infects a susceptible node with probability beta <coughs> right so there are s number of susceptible nodes so each infected node will infect s times beta susceptible nodes right and there are uh, i such infected nodes right so this is s i and r right so i such infected nodes will infect this many new suscept this many susceptible users and these are new infected these are new infected users or these are the users which would no longer be a part of susceptible user set right so the rate of change of susceptible user is negative of this quantity why negative because the population will decrease the susceptible population will decrease therefore negative and right and what is the rate of change of infected user the same number of users will be infected now so the rate of change of infected user is this but there are some users which would get recovered so what would what would be the rate so each infected user would get recovered with probability delta and there are i such infected users so this many users will be infect uh, will be recovered so this many users will move from infected state to the recovered state right so so the the rate of change of infected uh, population is this minus this right and what is the uh, rate of change of recovered user recovered popularity so basically this one so when the popularity uh, when the when the population gets uh, decrease not popularity population gets decrease we'll use negative symbol otherwise positive symbol right so now let's see let's look at this one so ds dt equals to minus beta si right ds so we can say that um ds by s is minus beta i dt we can integrate it right from t0 to t from s t0 to st so so you are basically looking at the number of users right number of susceptible users at time t1 say for example so we we'll integrate it and we get the value of sti similarly for recovered state and similarly for infected state right so in that way you can get the number of um, you know number of uh, number of infected users and number of recovered users and so on and so forth okay so if we if we draw this population right population s i and r over time you will see this kind of curve this is time here time means iteration number of nodes so number of susceptible users will decrease over time initially it is 100% similarly number of recovered users will increase over time and number of infected users would look like this so this is a sub t this is r of t and this is 
i of t. And this is quite intuitive, right? Because as susceptible users increases, infection increase, right? Up to certain point, you see all the most of the susceptible users are infected, and then infection will decrease and recovery will increase. If you do the simulation, you will get this kind of patterns. Okay. Let's look at the second model, SIS model, right? Susceptible, infected, and again, when uh, when you recovered, so there is no infected, there is no recover state as such. But when you uh, get infected, then you again can become susceptible. This is kind of a flu, flu kind of epidemic, a flu kind of virus spread, right? Someone uh, someone is susceptible, he will be infected, and and um, it is again uh, likely that he will again be susceptible and then infected, right? So here, again with probability beta, susceptible user becomes infected. With probability delta, infected user becomes susceptible. So what is the rate of change of susceptible user? This quantity, right, which indicates a decrease in susceptible population, whereas this quantity indicates this one, increase from infected to susceptible, right? What about this one? Rate of change of infection. This is essentially uh, the uh, so those users which are essentially moving for susceptible to infected, this quantity, but in a positive sense, minus those users who are moving for from infected to susceptible. This is this one. Okay. So here we define a quantity. Called the called the strength of a virus. So strength of a virus is beta by delta. Infection rate and recovery rate. Okay, and for every epidemic, we essentially measure this uh, beta by delta ratio. And it turned out that there is a nice relation between the graph adjacency matrix. Okay, and this um, and this strength, okay. It turned out that beta by delta is always less than less than this one, one by one by this uh, lambda lambda one a. What is this lambda one a? Lambda one a is the largest eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix A. So if you have the adjacency matrix A. You, cal you, uh, you you measure the largest eigen value you take the reciprocal uh, recipro uh, you know reciprocal value of this and that would be always greater than this beta by uh, you know delta value so what does it mean it means that the network has a has an effect on the strength of the virus right you in fact you can actually modify the network you can you can uh, change the structural property of the network in such a way that the strength will you know uh, will 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 uh, become lesser than a certain threshold because a is something which is on your hand you can change the network structure Let, let's say let's say you are facebook administration i mean uh, facebook uh, moderator right so you can think of which users to delete which links to break and so on and so forth so that's that's there in your hand, so you can you can control this, and therefore you can also control this one. In an offline case, you can control this by imposing, say, lockdown or uh, you know imposing this mask wearing mask constraint and so on. In that way, you can modify agency matrix, user user interaction network, and therefore this will be controlled. Okay. So, and this is an example right here. You see that uh, over time, right, how the number of infected nodes increases, uh, but decreases with different values of this strength, um, uh, strength uh, value, right? So, here you fix the birth rate and you change the death rate, right? And you see that with the change of death rate, how this basically changes. Okay, so um, 
so you see that when um, uh, say uh, say look at this one right when death rate is 0 .7, 0 0.07 right uh, versus when death rate is 0 0.05 right so when death rate is 0 0.05 uh, so this is constant right and this is lower when you have this versus when you have this this is higher so this is lower okay and you see that in that case the strength will decrease right therefore number of infected nodes will decrease over time okay this is a simulated result similarly if you look at other kind of observations for example when um, when um, you have certain number of carriers certain number of initiators right with a uh, uh, with a threshold of say with a strength of 0.9 you see doesn't matter because now eventually number of carriers right will die out uh, as you increase the number of uh, um, iterations or times right similarly when you increase uh, the threshold a bit right when the threshold strength is 1 right you see that it takes longer time than this one to die out right but when the strength is above 1 right you will see that irrespective of the number of carriers it will never die out it will always increase right it will always increase so the increasing of decreasing the number of initial carriers will have no difference in the extending or reducing the duration of the epidemic okay all right so in the next lecture we will discuss another such model which is acij model okay thank you